Let's look at inverse functions. For example, let's find the inverse of this one-to-one -one function f, and then we'll state its domain and range. The first thing we do when we're finding an inverse of a function is, in the definition of that function, we replace f of x by y. In other words, we have y is equal to x plus 3 divided by x minus 4. And then we interchange the rules of x and y. In other words, wherever we see a y, we put an x, and wherever we see an x, we put a y, which gives us x is equal to y plus 3 divided by y minus 4. And now we want to manipulate this equation in order to solve for y. When we do that and solve for y, y will be equal to f inverse of x. And we know we're going to be able to do that because we're given that f is 1 to 1 and therefore the inverse will exist. So let's begin by multiplying both sides of the equation by this denominator here, the y minus 4, which gives us x times y minus 4 is equal to y plus 3. And now let's distribute this x to both of these two terms which gives us x times y minus 4x is equal to y plus 3. Now remember, we want to solve for y. So let's bring all the terms with y in them to one side and everything else to the other. And this will give us that x times y minus y is equal to 3 plus 4x. And now on the left hand side we can factor out a y. And if we divide both sides of the equation by this x minus 1, we will have solved for y. So y is equal to 3 plus 4x divided by x minus 1. And this is f inverse. So f inverse of x is equal to 3 plus 4x divided by x minus 1. So here is our inverse. However, we also are asked to find its domain and range. So let's start with the domain. Looking here at f inverse, the only issue would be if x were equal to 1, because then we'd be dividing by 0. So we need to exclude this value. That is, the domain of f inverse, written in interval notation, is equal to negative infinity up to 1, open parenthesis because we want to exclude 1, union, again open parenthesis at 1 because we want to exclude it, up to infinity. All right, what about the range though? Now this is where we can use the fact that the range of the inverse is the domain of the original function. That is, this is equal to the domain of f. But what is this domain? Looking back up here at our original function, the only issue would be if x were equal to 4, because then we'd be dividing by 0. That is, we need to exclude this value in the domain of f. That is, the domain of f written in interval notation, is the interval from negative infinity up to 4, open parenthesis, because we want to exclude 4, union, open parenthesis again at 4, because we want to exclude 4, up to infinity. Which is also the range of the inverse. That is, this is equal to negative infinity, up to 4, union, 4 to infinity.
Now, this is very useful to be able to look at the domain of the original function to determine the range of the inverse. And this is how we work with inverse functions. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.